Hello, uh, this worksheet is a very brief tutorial on how to draw an object in curvilinear perspective. So as you would imagine, because curvilinear has the word curve in it, it's referencing a rounded object. So kind of imagine or visualize this cap on this uh, bottle. You can kind of imagine if I had to draw this and I had to represent the fact that I could see the top and the side of it, how would I create it so that it was done in correct perspective? So we're going to practice the idea of drawing a curvilinear or basically a rounded object in correct one point perspective. It's not as difficult as you might think as long as you follow the tutorial. So on the worksheet that you were given, you'll already notice that there's a horizon line set up and you'll notice that there's a vanishing point set out far to the left side of this. So we're going to draw our curvilinear object. We're going to try um, three curvilinear objects, one way above the horizon line, one on the horizon line, and one way below the horizon line. So let's get started. Um, and it's not different too much than the drawing of the boxes in perspective that you would have practiced, hopefully, uh, in the worksheet prior to this. So in the first practice on the front packet, you were asked to draw nine boxes. So I'm going to set up instead of drawing a box wanted or something a little bit more rectangular just simply because I think I wanted to have looked more like a cap to a water bottle much like this so I'm going to keep it more of a rectangle and as long as the rest follows the laws of perspective meaning that all my curvilinear lines are now going to be angled to one of the three corners of this rectangle so you'll notice that I put my ruler on the vanishing point I'm going to line it up with what would be the corner of the rectangle and I'm drawing rather lightly. I'm not going to draw it too dark because eventually I'm going to erase some of this. So it should look like a very long, long, long shoebox sitting up there way in the sky. And I'm now going to draw the end of the box. And as you learned when we did the nine boxes earlier in another video tutorial, I put my ruler parallel to the side left line and I'm just going to simply slide back. You get to pick how far back you want it to go, how deep you want that box to be. I'm going to do the very same thing on the bottom of the rectangle and simply slide back horizontally, making sure that it still remains parallel to the line above. And I now have a box sitting in correct perspective. So you could go in and do all of them um, at first. So I'm going to do two of them just so you can kind of see them. And then let's talk about rounding. So I'm going to do another very similar box sitting right on the horizon line. And I'm going to use the same vanishing point. And I'm going to set up two of the corners. And what would be the left side of it, of this box. So again, I'm going to get rid of some of these curvilinear lines. Or excuse me, these orthogonal lines. My apologies, these orthogonal lines. So now I have two boxes sitting there in correct perspective, right? And I would probably put a third, and I could put it down here so it looks like it's sitting on the ground. But let's just start with these two. So now I need to establish what would the this object look like so that it could look curved. So I'm going to take what would be the bottom of this box, and I'm going to start drawing an ellipse. So if you look on this worksheet, and if you look in class, we talked about an ellipse is nothing more than a distorted or squished circle, I guess, if you want to call it in an elementary way. And based on that rectangle, that's inside of there, that distorted orthogonal rectangle, I'm going to round out the corners and I'm going to softly draw an ellipse. You can now see it sitting on the underneath. It looks like there's a hole in the bottom of the box, right? The biggest have to is to make sure that that ellipse stays with inside the parameters of the bottom of that box that I set up in perspective. Now I have new lines I need to drop in. So if you look at what would be the widest part of the ellipse, I'm going to take my ruler and draw a line straight up. And I'm going to go to the left side and I'll draw another line straight up. And now I'm going to make sure that the top of this new cylinder, this curvilinear object, is somewhat similar to the front of the ellipse so that they match. Because again, I want it to look like I'm looking at a water bottle cap sort of from that angle. So I can't see the top half of that water cap. I can only see inside on the top or inside of it. So I'm going to gently, lightly sketch it. So it's actually another ellipse. If I were to finish it, 
you'd actually see a second ellipse there. But I don't need to finish it because eventually I want it to appear solid. So now if you look, I'm going to darken it so that you can see it on the video a little more clearly. You should be able to see what looks like a cylindrical object or a curvilinear object sitting in correct perspective. And you're going to probably have to tweak it a little bit. And again, to give it just a little bit more clarity, I'm going to put a few lines on here. You don't have to do this, but maybe this will make it look a little more dimensional. And inside, look a little more, make a little more darkness to it. So that is a curvilinear object, a rounded object in correct one point perspective. So let's quickly do this one sitting on the horizon line because it has a very distinct difference to it in that because it's sitting right at eye level, let's turn this water cap, you actually aren't going to see too much. It's not going to change that much because we won't see the top. We won't see the bottom. We'll only see the front of the cap. So there's only a slight ellipse to it. So I'm going to round the corners a little bit here and I'm going to round the corners here. It'll go into this second side of the box a little bit. And again, I'm going to erase most of what's left over that box that I had set up originally. The box is very important because it sets the guide for how, if it's done in correct curvilinear perspective, but eventually the box is going to disappear. So I would tell you again, as a reminder, do not commit to making really heavy, dark lines. And then again, if I'm trying to make it like the ridges on a water cap, I might put a few more here and then let it fade out. And you can start to see how it looks like a water cap, right? So then I am going to expect from you one more box sitting in correct one point perspective somewhere here. So you should have a total of three when you're done. I don't care how far apart they are spaced, but they should be at three different levels in this worksheet. Good luck, everybody.